Like the second way? First way. First way. First way works great for even, doesn't work so good for odd. You can't do that. So hopefully you get comfortable. If you're comfortable with this one, great. I need you to be comfortable with this one as well later on. In either case, those simplify out. I still take the cube root of negative 64. I have two x's that I was able to simplify out of that radical. Negative 4x squared is our answer. I'd like you to try a few of these on your own. By the way, there's not a whole lot of numbers I can give you right now that you can find the cube root of. Because if you think about the first five perfect cubes, well, there's one, then there's eight, there's 27, 64, 125. That, that's already, that's the first five perfect cubes. So you can only take the, the cube root of those five numbers that are between one and 200. Okay, so first example, we have cube root of 27 over 64. We're going to take the cube root of the numerator and the denominator. Cube root of 27 is? These are going to be very familiar numbers after a while because, again, there's only five of them I can have you do. 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. That's it. And if it's not one of those numbers, you can't take the cube root of it and get a whole number out of it. So here we go, yeah. 3 over? 4. 3 fourths for sure. Cube root of x to the 12th, you're going to do this one of two ways. And either way, first way you do something to the, we want third power. We want to match up the power on the root. What number has to go there? Four. We would get x to the 4th. If you do it the other way, you're going to get the same answer. You'd have to write x to the 3rd, x to the 3rd, x to the 3rd, x to the 3rd. That's four times. We'd simplify each one of them and get x to the 4th power. Here, the cube root of negative 8. What's cube root of negative 8? Good. And the cube root of x to the third, those simplify, we get just an x out of that. Raise your hand if you're okay with these cube roots. Good deal. You guys on the right hand side? Okay. Let's move it up one more time. We're not going to talk about square roots now. We're not going to talk, talk about cube roots now. We're talking about any root that I want. Then we say any root that we want is an nth root. You know, what's the n doing there? n stands for any integer number, or any whole number that you want. One, oh, I'm sorry, not one. You can't take a one root. Square, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, forever and ever and ever. Whatever type of root that I want to talk about. Here's how every root looks. We know we have a radical, and we know we put a little number up front. That index, that indices right there, is typically, if I don't write anything, what's that index? Two, good or x square or uh, square root. If I put a three, it's a cube root. If I put a four, it's a fourth root. Five, it's a fifth root. Whatever number I have there, it's that type of root. That's how we're getting the nth root, second root, third root, fourth, fifth, sixth. That type of root. For for instance, can we think about what the fourth root of sixteen means? What's the fourth root of sixteen? mean that you're looking for? We know square root is a number times itself, right? Cube root is a number times itself times itself. What's the fourth root mean? Again, yeah, that's all it means. Same idea. Can you think of a number times itself? Four times it gives you 16? Yeah. That's all an nth root is. It's whatever I give you 
It's the number times itself. That many times it gives you the radicand. By the way, do you think that you're going to be able to have a negative inside of a fourth root? No. no. Negative times a negative times a negative times a negative gives you a... Do you think you're going to have a negative inside any even root? No. That's impossible. If you have an even root, that means the number of times itself an even number of times. So two, or four, or six, or eight times. If you have the negative that many times, you're going to get a positive number. There's no way to get a negative number. How about inside of a fifth root? Is it okay to have a negative inside of a fifth root? Yes. Yeah. You have the extra time, right? The extra time where it doesn't match up evenly, two by two, is going to make your answer negative. Or, or you, potentially you could get a negative inside of that root. Is it okay to have a negative inside any odd powered root? Yes. Yeah. For sure, that's okay. That's okay. Because you have the extra negative tacked on, that's going to change your, your answer to negative. How about the fifth root of negative 32? What do you think on that one? Negative two. Good, because negative two times negative two five times is going to give you negative 32. Again, is this possible? We have a negative outside of squared, is that okay? That's how much? What's our n here, by the way? What's our n? Good, okay. And that one is? Why no row solution? Yeah, it's an even root. That's right. We can't have a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative and still get a negative. That doesn't work. So we're not going to write just no solution. It's no real solution. Actually, that. Okay. We won't go that far. How about that one? Can we do that? Can you deal with variables inside of any type of root? Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. What is the fifth root of 32? How about the fifth root of x to the fifth? Can you do that? How much do you think it is? Exactly. The same principles apply. So fifth root, fifth power, those things are also inverse. No matter what your n is, if you have that power inside of your, of your radical, then you're also going to be able to simplify that. So that's just 2x. There's just 2x. So a couple notes that we just learned. If n is even, you cannot have an, a negative as part of your radicand or inside the radical. And it's odd though, that's fine. The last thing we're going to talk about, we won't, we won't get into the graphing today, I just want to show you one more thing. The graphing actually is uh, just a refresher on a previous topic that we've covered. The last thing I want to show you, we're going to talk about roots of the form of something to the nth power, where those the nth power and nth root ma match up. You see, there's, there's one little, I don't want to say like a catch, like this is trying to trick you or something, but there's one idea that, that you need to be aware of when you're talking about these type of roots. And here's the idea. Let's say that I have 
a square root of negative 5 squared. And I have a cube root of negative 2 cubed. Here's the issue I need, to, I need you to know why this is kind of a problem for us in one case and not a problem in another case. Watch on the board here real quick, okay? If you understand all this stuff, great, that's awesome. <coughs> I need you to get this little, little point down. Firstly, you were okay, right, that whenever a power matched the root, power matched the root, we could just cross it out. Yeah. Understand? So in this case, I want you to look at the board. In this case, we should be able just to say, oh, that's a square root, that's a square, I should be able to cross that out, and we should be able to get negative 5 out of that. Do you understand that? Yeah. We should be able to do that if that's true. In this case, we should be able to cross out the, th the third power and the third root and get negative 2 out of that. Are you with me on this? Yeah. That's exactly what we just did. However, I need you to notice something. If you really do the order of operations and go, oh, well, this is, what's negative 5 squared, actually? 25. That's a square root of 25. What's the square root of 25, folks? Five. Now, we know that one's true, right? Because we just did it. Are these things equal? No. That is, what? Why? <laughs> should, it just, should it just do that? Why does that happen? On this case, though, check it out. Check it out. If we have a cube root, if we have a negative 2 to the cube, what, what's negative 2 cubed? Negative 8, sure. What's the cube root of negative 8? Not just 2, right? Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's, that's negative 2. Are you with me on this, folks? These things, cool, those do work out the way we want them to. Oh. Happy face, right? This one, what happened here? This one's fine, right? This one we could just cross it out. This one we, we couldn't. And Lily's over there saying, yes, this one's even, one's odd. Yeah, of course. That's, that's actually the reason why. If you have an even power, what it does is it says inside your root, it says, oh, I'm going to make whatever you have positive, right? No matter what. The negative, or the negative inside of a, a third power or a fifth power or an odd power is saying, I'm, I'm going to keep that negative. That's fine. So what we get out of this thing is that we can't just cross this out. How can I change, by the way, a negative, this one, to match up to what we actually know? How do I change this? into this. What do I do to change this into this? Something we've already used in this class in the previous section, in section 9.3 and 9.2. What changes to positive to a negative, no matter what? We could multiply. I don't want to multiply by anything, though. So another option in that is a good idea. Absolute value. Absolute value. Here's what we need to know about this. When you take an even root over an even power, what we, what we get out of this is not just that we can cross this out and get negative 5. What we do is we, we cross this out, sure, but what that actually equals is the absolute value of negative 5. What's the absolute value of negative 5? That would make this true. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That would make this true. Now we have something that's equal, and we get another smiley face. That's for some reason looks like a weird smiley face to me, kind of freaky. <laughs> It's me. Here's what we're just learning right now. Last thing we'll probably write down here. What we're understanding is that 